Gentlemen, we are proud to announce the arrival of this afternoon's program, the guest of honor, Sri B.B. Swain, the Secretary, Ministry of MSME, Government of India. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you for joining us for the, af for the afternoon session of the fourth day of the cultural program and the fifth day of the 20, 22nd Hornbill Festival 2021 here at Kisamal, Kohima. At this point of time, we are very proud to have our guest of honor, Sri B.B. Swain, the Secretary, Ministry of MSME, Government of India. We also have Sri Suresh Kumar, the special guest for today. He is an IRS officer, Director General, Income Tax, West Bengal, Sikkim, and NER, Government of India. Ladies and gentlemen, the host for this afternoon is... The host for this afternoon is Sri Tobi Hoto Ayemi, the advisor for Per Department, Government of India. He is accompanied by our festival host, Sri H. Yatomi, 
the advisor for tourism, art and culture, Gov of Nagaland. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point of time, we would like to felicitate our guest of honor, Sri B.B. Swain, the Secretary, Ministry of MSME, Government of India. Our guest of honor is being felicitated with a shawl, a Nava traditional headgear, a Dao and a spear by the host Sri Tomihoto Ayemi, the advisor for the government of Nahu. We also have in our midst our special guest for this afternoon, Sri Suresh Kumar, IRS Director General, the Income Tax West Bengal, Sikkim and NER Government of India. Ladies and gentlemen, we are also proud to have Srimati Mercy, the Joint Secretary, MSME, Government of India. Ladies and gentlemen, our special guest, Sri Suresh Kumar, is accompanied by his lady wife. Hello. Cultural troops, it is a role called Takibo. First, Kuki cultural troop. Zilian cultural troop. Look 
cultural crew. The 
team will try to hit the defending team with the ball. If they are able to hit the feet, they will be considered as out from the game. The objective of the game is to create a structure with the stones. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the team is trying to put the stones together. They have hit the ball far away, so I so that they have more time to construct the stone structure. The structure has fallen. The attacking team, they are trying hard. They are trying to hit their enemy with the ball. They are creating space so that their team can build the stone structure. They will have to step up the stones. Ladies and gentlemen, the players are considered out only if the ball hits their feet. Ladies and gentlemen, the stones are not of the same size or shape, so it's very difficult to stack them up.
Ladies and gentlemen, they have now changed sides. Ladies and gentlemen, the team of elders are now trying to build the stone structure. The youngsters are the ones attacking and trying to make their opponent, the elders, out from the gate. The player is considered out because he was able to hit the ball but one of the opponents were able to catch the ball without it hitting the ground. What you are witnessing here is the Rangma tribe of Nagya demonstrating an indigenous game called Pagejo or Leg Ball. Ladies and gentlemen, the Rangma tribe of Nagaland demonstrating for you the Pakejo, a traditional game of the Rangmas, which is which is known in English as leg ball. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to us another indigenous game. We have the Kumishi Village Cultural Troop representing the Sumi tribe of Nagaland bringing to us an indigenous game, Ibinopi Sujo. My brother said, Sujo, Sujo.
ladies and gentlemen, the swimming tribe of Dublin are displaying for you a traditional game. This game requires a lot of agility, endurance and strength. This game is made so that the youth are able to maneuver properly in the battlefield. Ladies and gentlemen, this game requires perfect synchronization with each other. Ladies and gentlemen, this game signifies that each one, including brothers, or be it villagers or communities, should stand together, united, and should not break the bond between them. Ladies and gentlemen, this game signifies the togetherness and brotherhood. It also expresses the joy, the love that they have for each other. The human chain. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the human chain represents the brotherly love that they have for each other. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kumushi village cultural group representing the Sumi tribe of Nagaland. Performing for you next, we have the Biro Village Cultural Troop from Moha District representing the Lota tribe of Nagle.
and gentlemen, in the Lotara Culture Troupe, we are performing for you a traditional dance called Shantara. It is believed that this dance was performed by their forefathers in the days of Hedmanti. When a village is built, it was very important to defend the gate. Therefore, a fence is built around the village with only one main gate for enough. This gate was guarded by the most able bodies, usually the male. Dressed in their traditional attires, equipped with weapons and accompanied by defending war cry, they shout and then they challenge their enemies while guarding the village. Ladies and gentlemen, the Shantara dance of the Lota culture group. This dance is only performed by the most able males of the clan or the village. Usually, the village gate is guarded on rotation basis. The Shantara dance of the Lotha tribe was performed by those guarding the main gate of the village. The main reason for keeping guard was to inform the village in case of any attack or danger. This dance would keep them alert, safe, and sound. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pillow Village 
Cultural Group, representing the local tribe of Nagwe, performing for you a traditional dance called Shanta. Ladies and gentlemen, bringing to us a folk dance of the Meg Kacharis, we have the Burkhan Cultural Society representing the Kachari tribe of Nagaland. This folk dance is an important form of traditional dance for the Meg Kacharis of Nagaland. They are performed during the Patho Puja or Kerai Puja. This dance is performed mainly by the young women. As per the belief, the young Kachari women dress in their best traditional attires, perform the dance and pray to Borai Patho, the Almighty, to purify their souls and to make their minds steady so as to enable them to indulge in the welfare of the society.
ladies and gentlemen, the Burkhong Cultural Society, representing the Qatari tribe of Nagaland. Let us now welcome the Kohima Village Cultural Troupe, representing the Angami tribe of Nagaland. Ladies and gentlemen, today the Angami tribe of Nagaland will be demonstrating for you an indigenous game. This game in the local dialect of the Angamis is called Tetze Kea. If you are familiar with the game of dodgeball, this is the traditional version of the dodgeball. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, we have two teams, one on the right and one on the left. They are trying to hit each other with a ball that is made of leaves. The ball is made of leaves. Each team will try to hit each other with the ball. It's a three versus three now. There are two players remaining. Now, down to one. Three versus one. Ladies and gentlemen, the group on the right are the winners. Are the winners of the first round. In the traditional Naga culture, it is very common that a people would share drinks and food while playing games. Let me remind you that the walls are made of leaves.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have the clear winners. The pair is on the right. That was the Kohima Village Cultural Group representing the Ankami tribe of Nagre, demonstrating for you an indigenous game called the Zen Kea. Ladies and gentlemen, let us now welcome the Kuki Cultural Group representing the Kukie tribes of Nagaland. They will bring to us a folk dance titled Sudan Lam. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kuki tribe of Nagaland will be performing for you the Bestel dance of the Suta Lam. This dance originates from a story of a village chief and his daughter. It was believed that the only daughter of a village chief fell in love with an orphan. The village chief was not willing to allow their marriage, so he had a plan to break the ankles of the boy. For this, the chief arranged a feast and the festival dance. The festival dance was fashioned crush the ankle of the boy during the dance.
ladies and gentlemen, for our next performance, let us welcome the Naga Wadir Cultural Club from Umba Village, representing the Our Tribe of Nagaland. gentlemen a folk dance demonstrating the cockfight which is also called the Antubong Rara by the Our Tribe of Nagu. This game is known as Kok Fai or Antipongara because it represents the Kok who fights in a similar manner even for the whole day to prove its strength until one winner is the divine. In the olden days, this game was played to prove the strength and courage of a warrior and also indicative of the male members preparing for battle. tries to capture the movement of the animals during the cockfight.
representing the Owl Tribe of Nagaland. Following the Owl Cultural Troop, we have the Peg Village Cultural Troop representing the Jakisang Tribe of Nagul.
members of the Jakasam Cultural Troop are clearing the fields. At the same time, the men and the women folk are singing. The singing of the song would provide them with a rhythm to continue their work. Two 
one on my left and the other on the right. The opening has been chosen. In this game, both the players stand facing each other. They would then hold the back of their of their neck with their hands. After holding the back of their necks, they will try to bring each other down. This game or the Maka Bakala Pala Pala is a trial of strength. This game is played so as to look for the strongest person in the village. Ladies and gentlemen, the Garo cultural tour demonstrating for us their traditional wrestling called Makal Bala. And with that performance, we have come to the end of the afternoon session of the cultural program themed 
Cultural Connect, brought to you by the Department of Art and Culture, in association with the Tourism Department, Government of Nagaland. Cultural troops can soap, karagruna, halagrume, janaiti gasu. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight, this afternoon, for the Cultural Connect. Please do join us again tomorrow at 10 a.m. and at 1 p.m. So that comes to the end of today's uh, cultural program from Gisama. For more news and updates, keep watching Hornbill TV.